What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going to be looking at, talking about, and reviewing the Bluetooth wireless kit for your aim track. I'm also going to help you with a troubleshooting issue that I had with this. I'll give you my brutal, honest opinion, so stay tuned. Is it worth it? Alright guys, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. If not, always follow me on all the socials. You'll find it in the link tree description down below. At Vic underscore VP. I, I say that because I do feel like a lot of people are going to be coming in because there's not many videos on this AimTrack Bluetooth kit. And I think I know why, but I'm glad to you know add my opinion and kind of give you also some help as far as troubleshooting in case you hit that update firmware button inside of the aim track uh, tool utility tool so if you are new thank you for joining let's get right into it let's talk about this bluetooth kit now real quick if you are new i do build arcade cabinets v pins touch screens everything arcade related i do it all you're looking at a by vic 55 inch four player arcade cabinet this one does have one bluetooth aim track light gun kit and i do have another separate light gun that is wired and I'll tell you exactly why in this video. Now real quick, if you are like me, you're probably clicking this video because you need help and kind of like a troubleshoot on how to bring your device back to life if you press that update firmware button inside of the utility tool. Either that, Andy over at Ultimark emailed me back and he told me what was needed to bring it back. Long story short, if you do press that update firmware button, you, shit hits the fan. You can no longer connect to your aim track and it's a huge nightmare. I'm gonna basically show you what Andy told me to do. Now real quick, we're gonna look at the actual module itself. This is what you get from Ultimark. It's most likely in your gun right now. I have this outside. I'm gonna show you what Andy told me to do. So your gun normally is intact just like you see here. Andy says you should disconnect the battery. So this is right where the charging port is on the bottom. You're gonna disconnect the battery and you're also going to disconnect the board here. So you have your charging cable here. This is the lens here. And what he said to do is that you're going to take a screwdriver and right here that you disconnected, you're going to actually short this. You're going to touch this together. Those two pins, you're going to actually touch those two pins together with a screwdriver. Once you do that, it will bring you back. Apparently it brings it back to life. You do want to do this disconnected. Don't do it with the battery intact. Also, to be safe, he also mentioned you could touch this here as well. This is the wire that's going into the battery pack. You could also short that out too, just like that. So short this and also short your lens here. This is the one that goes to the buttons. You don't touch that. It's this one up top, right behind the lens. You're just going to touch that, hold it there for like a couple of seconds, and then you should be able to reconnect back into your aim tracks. Now, one thing that they don't mention is how to do this foam thing that they send you. They send you this block just like that. Uh, after assembling this four times, you actually want to rip this in half. And you're going to put one on this end of the battery and this on the other, just like that. You want to sandwich that and then put it inside the gun. This will relieve it from rattling inside. I originally just put it like this, like on one side, and it would rattle. If you rip it in half and then sandwich it you won't have the rattle inside the gun anymore now some people are going to watch that and be like what just happened yes uh whatever it is um you know if you press the update firmware button uh shit hits the fan in all honesty andy said in his email that they will ship this to you with the already updated firmware what's kind of crazy is that the firmware number on this is different than the wired aim track which is why i pressed update firmware this firmware is like 1.2 and my like wired ones is like 9.1. So I was just prone to pressing update. Sure enough, I could not connect to the aim track. I kept getting an error and Andy said to do that and I was then able to reconnect. But now enough of that. You are here, if you are here, you're new here and you clicked on the video because you wanna hear some details on the Bluetooth kit. Is it worth it? Is it great? Can you do two players with it? I'm gonna talk your ear off and I'm gonna go through the entire thing that I experienced. Now, off the bat, I am not paid by Ultimark. This is my personal opinion. Uh, I wish I was getting paid by them, but I'm not getting paid. I bought this fair and square 
just like any normal person would buy it. I personally bought four Bluetooth kits. I have two kits that we're gonna go on to this specific cabinet for a customer, and I was gonna put two on my personal cabinet. Off the bat, real quick, if you did decide to buy this, I'm gonna tell you right now, do not dissect, do not open your gun. It's very simple. Check out Bradley's video on how to do it. It's a very simple mod, but in my experience, configure and set up your gun just like this. In your hand, get it working like this, because I personally opened this gun like six times, because number one, I had that update firmware issue, and then it kept disconnecting, and if I were you and you just got this, configure your gun like this. Even if you have to hold it like this, just do it. Save your time, just to make sure that you do like it. So off the bat, don't even install it in the gun. Get it working like this. So now my PC is this PC right here is a current gen PC. So I have the works in this, 3060 Ti. It's all good, it's all up to date. I'm not running a potato running Windows 7, okay? I am running Windows 10. My computer does have Bluetooth. It does have the Bluetooth option. If you are gonna buy this, save your time and get the dongle. Buy the dongle. Just save your time and get the dongle. It's so much easier that way. Get the dongle, get it done. You do need the dongle, okay? On their website, the PDF, it says that you're not supposed to download the driver if you have Windows 10. Forget that, you have to download the driver. So you will be downloading that driver. You're gonna go against what the website says, download the driver. Now, I'm gonna save you the time. If you are looking to get this to work with two players, two players simultaneously, if you want two wireless aim tracks, it will not work. No, you could end the video right now. You cannot do two players. In my experience, I wasted a week trying to get two players. I went back and forth in emails trying to get two players to work. It will not work. I have four dongles. I have four wireless Bluetooth kits. Originally, when I pressed that update firmware, this was now useless. It wouldn't connect. I had to open up another kit. I went through it all. I went through war for this. And I'm telling you, you cannot play two players simultaneously wireless. Even if you have two dongles, it will not work. That driver that they have that you have to download, it's gonna recognize this dongle, it's gonna recognize the aim track. If you try to put another dongle in, it doesn't recognize that there's two dongles, it's just one dongle because it's all the same dongle. Then if you do connect another Bluetooth kit to the dongle, it will show up but it will only connect one gun. Your other gun will never connect again. You have to re-enter the Bluetooth, you have to re-scan. Telling you right now, if you're looking for two players, no, you can end the video right now, it's not gonna work. Now some of you are gonna watch this video like, damn, this guy is really heated. I, I wasted a week. I wasted a week and I bought four kits. Three of them right now are in the basement because it's gonna cost me more money to ship it back to London than to just, you know, keep it and refund it. So I right now have three kits that are just going to future builds and all that, but you can do two players simultaneously. So now real quick, I'm a big believer on, you know, dongles should be exposed. It should be straight line of sight, nothing obstructing line of sight. If you do have the dongle inside of your cabinet and there's walls and it's no longer, you do run the risk of disconnect. So me personally on this build and even on my build downstairs, I do put the dongle right in front, it is external, it is exposed, and straight line of sight. So I shouldn't have any issue as far as disconnects now. So I know I'm being like negative right now. I guess you could take it as I'm gonna talk about the bad first and then I'll talk about the good. Uh, but in all honesty, the main thing I wanted was two players simultaneously working wireless and it just doesn't do it. You could do one wireless and one wired, just like how I have this cabinet and my personal cabinet hooked up, but sadly, you know, I'm just frustrated because I wasted a week. Going back and forth on emails, I feel like they know you can do it, but they still try to push you to do it. Uh, if you do get it to work, please post a video, but nobody has videos of two players working at the same time. Aside from like that, and that big thing that really pissed me off was the update firmware, and I just lost connection, um, it was a nightmare. I'll be honest, if Andy didn't like tell me what to do with that shorting, even when you short it, you might not get the connection right away. You might have to do it a couple of times, which is why I'm mentioning if you get the kit, just 
configure it here. Like just do it in your hand just like this. It looks dumb, but save you your time. Save also the threading on the screws. Get it to work outside. Again, this works great. One player wireless, one player wired. If you're doing just one player wireless, it works. It's great. I like it. So I guess now we'll talk about the good. I have one more random bad, but we'll do that while we're doing gameplay. So I got the kit in the mail, awesome. I charged it, it says like charge it for 30 minutes. This right now has been just like this for a month. I've been working on this cabinet for a month for a customer. It's been on and off, I've been playing it. I probably played it so far for about, in total, I mean going on and off day by day, on and off. In total, I would say I've been playing it for about three hours and it still holds its charge. I've only charged this thing one time. They do give you kind of a short cable. It's not too short, maybe it's like four feet uh, to charge and that's great. But so far, like a positive is I charged it one time and I've been rocking and I like it. So now even though it is wireless, you still do need the light bar on the top of the TV. So that's all standard basic stuff. You basically just removed the wire and that's the good of it. I, I like how loose this is. I'm able to walk around and, you know, granted it is aim track accuracy, so it's not gonna be like gun for IR. It's, you know, you're gonna get your fair share. But in all honesty, it's great. Uh, we'll probably just launch some gameplay right now. Again, if you do buy the kit, I can't, I can't tell you enough, I can't stress it enough. Charge it just like this, like just have this in your hand. And as long as you connect the gun, like if you go to Bluetooth, you connect, and you could just take the lens and you see the mouse moving on the screen, then you're good to go. Like proceed with putting it in the gun. Just be sure not to press that update firmware button, whatever you do. All right, we'll do some quick gameplay on a couple of games and some issues that I see in a handful of games, okay? First one that's a big letdown is Time Crisis. There is an issue when playing this game with the Bluetooth kit on Time Crisis. So, as you can see, I have the light bar up top. Definitely this light here, it does interfere a little bit. So, I'm gonna most likely turn the light off. But, I just wanna show you one of the issues that I do have with this. Time Crisis is a game that needs a pedal. And the pedal is mapped out to the right click, which is mapped out to either the left or the right button on your aim track. My issue though is that you cannot hold the right click and click. As you can see, it dropped down. I'm holding right, I'm holding it. I could, I could just do it normal, but if I fire, I now lose it. I, I, I can't stand back, like it won't, it should be, I should be staying up. So this is one downside. As you can see, I basically have to hit these two times. I have to right click and like fire, right click and fire. So. That is just one thing, as you can see, when it comes to time crisis, it's, uh, it's a downside, it's upsetting, this kind of sucks. I'm getting like one shot and then I'm going down. One shot and then I'm going down. Sucks, uh, time crisis on this sucks. Now, again, the light definitely does play a factor. So, as far as like aim, I'm pretty good. I do notice that if I go off screen and then bring it back, it kind of goes like ape shit, as you can see there but I do feel like it's the light. So let's turn off the light real quick. Turn off the garage lights. Okay. So if I do it now, I'm gonna let the game kind of restart. You can still see my crosshair. Let's insert coins, we're gonna continue. So now though, if I like, if I'm going up and then down, I'm good. It's definitely that light. You know, if I have that light there, I'm a okay. So that little disconnect that you see that kind of spazzing out, it's because of that light. Now that I'm off, I'm a okay. I have the fire. It's just a game like this where you have to hold the right click. Basically, if you press two buttons at once, it's awful. Now, another huge thing. I don't understand why it does this. If you hit all three buttons at the same time, the whole thing disconnects for like 10 seconds. So. I'm gonna hold right, I'm gonna hold the other trigger, the other um, red button here and pull. And now as you can see, I disconnect. I'm still not connected. And now I'm connected. It's like if you press all three buttons at the same time, it like shorts out the entire board and that's it. Vic, what are the chances of you pressing all three buttons? Honestly, playing Time Crisis, 
you have the chance of pressing all three buttons. Again, if I hit all three buttons, I'm out. So there's another bad to it. So right now playing a game that requires you to hold one button and hit the trigger, it is a downside, it's a letdown. Sad. So now real quick, we're gonna grab the second light gun. In this customer's case, he got the red one, non-recoil wired. Again, if you wanna play two players, one has to be wired. You cannot do two wireless. So I have one wireless and one wired. Um, we could launch the new Rabbids game that just came out, uh, Rabbids Hollywood. So I'm gonna long press that. Again, it does work together, two players at the same time. One though has to be a wireless controller. The other one is wired. Hyperspin right now is doing its thing. It's gonna launch the game. I got my credits here. I got my credits here. I'm gonna start with player two just for kicks. Just so you can see that the gun is there. So as you can see, it's a green crosshair for player two. Game is gonna load. Um, I'm just gonna do player two for now. I'll bring in player one in a second. So all in all, if you're gonna do one player, it's great. So far, I have issues with three games. One that you saw was Time Crisis. Uh, Time Crisis 1, as you can see, hitting those buttons, it, it doesn't work. The other two is two-player mode, House of the Dead Remake and Blue Estate two-player mode. Um, it won't work. You cannot do two-player. You could do one-player mode, but you cannot do two-player mode. So as you can see right now, I got my, two, my second player, player two, is firing. I'll bring in player one. Player one is a blue crosshair. I got my light on, I might have to turn it off. I'll do it real quick. Turn off the garage lights. Okay. And as you can see, two players at the same time, I'm good. I'm here. Again though, one is wireless and the other one is wired. If you could live with that, that's a-okay. As far as like time crisis, I could go into MAME and then configure the light gun for player two to work. So it's not detrimental. The only thing I said, House of the Dead remake two player doesn't work and Blue Estate two player doesn't work. Now the big thing is that when you do this wireless kit, uh, it, no, the computer is no longer recognizing it as aim track number one and aim track number two. Um, it's just recognizing it as like a Microsoft USB mouse. So uh, there's really no product IDs, like a PID. If there is, it's huge. And I think I have the product ID for my main. Uh, it's, it's, it's a big, and it's a hassle to figure it out. Um, and no, it's not a universal product ID. I can't give you the ID. I've tried it on two separate ones. It's two different IDs. Again, you can't do two player. Time crisis, if you're basically doing two buttons at once, it disconnects. And if you hit the three buttons all together, you totally get a disconnect. So, I mean, again, is it worth it? I think it is. I like it. You know, although I sound so negative, I like it for when it works. Um, and again, so far I only charged it one time. Only needs 30 minutes to charge. It works. I like it. I would recommend it. If you were like me that you wanted two players, it ain't gonna happen. I don't care what you say, it's not gonna happen. But there you guys have it. The AimTrack Bluetooth wireless kit, one player only works. Cool.